All right. Hello, 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 everyone. This is Mr. Atkins. I am your tour guide on this Lost Studies journey. Welcome to uh, Baldwin's 2020 Open House Session. Um, what I would like to share with you is a PowerPoint presentation that I've previously made. So uh, welcome to Teams, by the way. Some of you, this may or may not be your first time actually witnessing uh, how we use Teams. So your students are pretty familiar with it, but you may, may or may not be. So here is my PowerPoint. And as I mentioned before, I'm a law studies teacher. I teach sixth and seventh grade, and I'm also a traveling teacher. And so I've been teaching at Baldwin since about 2014. Uh, I'm a college professor and a CEO of my own company. I love working out and reading books. And my email is atkinst at duvalschools.org. That's a very important email. Since I travel so much, it's the best way to get in contact with me. So we want to make sure that you always keep that email handy. So law studies, you know, a lot of people ask what class is actually law studies. So law studies is, in my opinion, like a baby civics class, a baby American government's class. So, so this class teaches students how to um, how to get involved with government, right? How they can impact government, how government impacts them, and lastly, how does government work? Period. And during this political time, this is an awesome, awesome time to have this class. The more students can understand about how our government started, uh, the more they understand why they are so important in the whole governmental process. This course is designed to support the rigorous curriculum of civics, which is of course they'll be taking next year. Um, there is an end of course exam or, or an EOC is what we call it at the end of this school year. Now that course exam is worth 20% to zero. That's a big percentage of their overall grade. So what we do to help ensure that students are prepared for that exam is we don't just give them that exam all at once. We, we take baby steps toward the exam. We call them common assessments. So what we do on a regular basis is give students common assessments, which basically assess specific standards to ensure that students are progressing on par with the state uh, to be successful at mastering the EOC content. Now to assist in that mastery, we wanna include as much software as possible. It's important that students have a good bit of technology in their day. And so there are three websites that I wanna to bring to your attention iCivics, Brain Pop, and Achieve 3000. So uh, Achieve 3000 is an awesome website. It, it helps ensure that students have uh, assessments and, and a material that's at their specific academic level. So that's important. Brain Pop is very interactive. It's fun. It gets students engaged. And, and, I, and I like it because it puts a little bit of pep in their step. And iCivics is more leaning toward giving them that rich content which will be needed in order to master what's going to happen next year in actual civics, hence the name I civics. So you may be asking, well, how do you turn work in Mr. Atkins? So there's two different <clears throat> ways that I wanna talk about. The first way is Teams or online. So all assignments are posted on Focus uh, for students to download the assignments or they can actually hand in the assignments. So if a student decides to download the assignment, they would download the assignment, save it to their laptop, or a computer, they can pull it up, type in it, and then they can email that assignment to me, or they can, again, re-upload that assignment back to Focus. Now, I have given students instructions on how to do this already. So parents, I think it'd be a great refresher for students if you ask that stu your student to show you uh, how is that process works and, 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 and just practice, right? You can literally send me an assignment and just say practice on it if, if you so choose. Um, another way, the other set of students are our BAM students or brick and mortar students or our face to face students. So if you're face to face, we just is just really old school, right? You just simply hand me a hard copy. Now, because of COVID-19, what we've elected to do is instead of you, a student handing me a hard copy directly, we have QM folders in every class, cumulative folders. And students will simply place their completed work in their QM folders and I in turn collect the folders at the end of class or at the beginning of class. It just depends on how the lesson falls. And then I'll go through each folder and I'll make the corrections and then place the corrected work back in folders. Uh, I really like QM folders because sometimes I'm, I'm frantically grading and there's multiple things going on at once. And sometimes students will say, you know, Mr. Atkins, I've turned work into you, but I don't see it on focus. And then that's when we refer back to their folder. We correct the issue immediately and everything is lovely. 
Um, now, I would prefer for students who are absent to please turn their work in via focus. OK, don't just wait until you come back to school to turn it in because then you can be more and more behind. And it also gives me an opportunity to more to grade the work immediately. So that way, when you come back in, we can just roll right into the new lesson. Now, as I kind of alluded to before, the best way to get in contact with me is going to be through my email. And the reason for that is I'm a traveling teacher. Each each class period, I'm in a different room, so it's pretty hard to call me and leave a message. Now, that being said, what I try to do is answer emails from 6.30 a.m. Uh, to 3 p.m. on school days uh, throughout the week. Um, and I'm usually really, really good about answering emails and, and getting back to you pretty quickly. If you do send me an email, you or your student, please include the student's first and last name and the class period in which I have them. That makes it way easier for me to figure out which one of my 150 students you're referring to, what class they have, what sp specific assignment they that we're referring to, and then I can get back with you that much faster. So tutoring is one of the safety nets that our department has incorporated into uh, our daily schedule, right? So the, the I have two different things, right? I have the brick and mortar students, and then I have the, uh, the team students, the online students. So I wanna offer online tutoring, and the way I would like to do that is once I have enough students or parents and or parents asking me about tutoring, we'll determine if it's going to be in the afternoon before school, 6.30 a.m., or if it's going to be at 2.30 p.m. after school. Um, the good thing about online is we don't have to worry about students catching a ride home, so that's pretty cool. Um, but, but if you are a brick and mortar student, if you're face to face, uh, I would like to do tutoring before school only. Uh, as it now stands, we don't have an activity bus, which is a bus that has been used to take students home um, around five o'clock or so after all the activities at school have expired that particular day. And so us keeping the tutoring before school, it just alleviates the issue of uh, finding a ride to get home and things like that. We would determine what day specifically we would use or days we would use to tutor um, once I have enough people together and we can kind of get our schedules to mesh. I think my grading is pretty straightforward. It's the same thing that's stated on the syllabus. Uh, 100 to a 90 is an A, 89 to 80 is a B, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and that's pretty standard. Now, my homework, classwork, quizzes, and assessments, they're not weighted the same, and that's because the rigor isn't the same. The level of um, preparation that's needed to be successful for each assignment in those specific categories isn't the same. And let me give you an example. So homework may be one question, maybe two. And homework, I encourage students to please, please, please ask their parents or whomever at home to be involved with their work when it comes to homework. So, you know, if a student does work very well on a homework assignment, I don't necessarily know if they did it all on their own or if they got a little help from the Internet or if they got a little help from you all who are listening. Now, the assessments are weighted a little bit differently, and that's because students are going to have to show some long term memory. They're going to have to show me um, that they can not only just synthesize the information, but they can also regurgitate that information. They can use it on demand um, and they can use it in multiple ways. So maybe I'm asking them to do a short, short essay. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm asking them to do fill in a blank. Maybe I'm asking them to do multiple choice. Um, so there's different there's different demands that they, they need to be able to show mastery of in order for them to be able to successfully um, uh, accomplish the task of mastering one of my assessments. And so that's why assessments are 40% while homework is only 10% makeup work. The same amount of days that a student is absent, they have that same amount of time to make up an assignment. Um, however, if a student is unfortunately turning in work a little late, for each day that they're late, there's a 10% reduction in grade. I want students to understand that there's a benefit, there's a necessity to being punctual. And everything in their adult life will, will center around punctuality and being organized. And so that's a skill that's learned over time. And so that time to start learning that skill is now. Uh, teams. So students must do their attendance in the general channel on the on the attendance tab when we are having class on teams, which is which means they're not here. They're at home. Um, they will use students will use the live class channel to attend class. Um, please, please, please do not discuss individual grades or assignments on teams because everyone can see them. Please, let's just keep that to the email. Um, I would very much like it so no one knows everything that we're talking about pertaining to your grades. Well, 
that is it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed my little tour guide. I definitely enjoyed giving it. Uh, I hope we're, we're going to have an awesome sauce year this year. If you guys have any questions, please email me again. My email is atkinst at duvalschools.org. And I look forward to seeing you guys in class.